Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 15th of November. Indian PM Modi says need to focus on trade and investment among BRICS nations. Relations with Afghanistan normal after recent row, says Pakistan's Foreign Office. And Sri Lanka gets up for crucial presidential poll. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday left for home after his two-day visit to Brazil to attend the 11th BRICS summit. Modi addressed the plenary session of the meet where he highlighted issues including trade, investment, terrorism, water management and multilateralism. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday stressed on the need to focus on trade and investment among the BRICS nations and called for efforts to strengthen cooperation in the field of innovation. Addressing BRICS plenary session in Brazil's capital, Brasilia, Prime Minister Modi said innovation has become the basis of development and therefore it is necessary that member nations strengthen cooperation in the field. Raising the issue of terrorism, the Prime Minister said that the menace has resulted in the loss of $1 trillion to the world economy. We have to give attention to the intra-BRICS vyapar vishwa vyapar is only 15% of the world's population is only 40% of the world's population. सर्विस सेक्टर जीडीपी का बड़ा हिस्सा है इसलिए सर्विसेज में व्यापार को बढ़ाने की अच्छी संभावनाएं हैं प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी लेटर एड्रेस्ड अ डायलॉग विद ब्रिक्स बिजनेस काउंसिल एंड न्यू डेवलपमेंट बैंक ही कॉल्ड अपॉन द ब्रिक्स बिजनेस काउंसिल टू प्रिपेयर अ रोड मैप टू अचीव द टारगेट ऑफ 500 बिलियन यूएस डॉलर्स ट्रेड बिटवीन द मेंबर कंट्रीज ऑफ द ब्लॉक बाय 2020 द ईयर व्हेन रशिया होस्ट द नेक्स्ट समिट during the 11 break summit, leaders of the bloc nations reaffirmed their fundamental commitment to mutual respect and shared the goal of building a peaceful, stable and a prosperous world. Launching a blistering attack on Pakistan at the UNESCO General Conference in Paris on Thursday, India said that the cash-stabbed nation has terrorism embedded in its DNA and that the country's neurotic behavior is responsible for the ravaged state of its economy and society. Pakistan has a deep-rooted DNA of terrorism, India said at a UNESCO meet in France on Thursday in a sharp reply to Pakistan over its false propaganda on Jammu and Kashmir, asserting that the cash-strapped nation's neurotic behavior had resulted in its decline to a nearly failed state. While exercising the second right to reply at the 40th General Conference of UNESCO in Paris, Indian diplomat Ananya Agrawal called out Pakistan on its hypocrisy, systematic persecution of minorities and glorification of terrorism. She described Pakistan as a home to all shades of darkness, from extremist ideologies and darker parts of radicalization to the darkest manifestation of terrorism. Pakistan's neurotic behavior has resulted in its decline to a nearly failed state with a weak economy, radicalized society, and deep-rooted DNA of terrorism. We condemn Pakistan's disappointing misuse of UNESCO to spew venom against India and politicize UNESCO. The Indian diplomat listed Pakistan's treatment of minorities and said that in 1947, minorities formed 23% of Pakistan's population they have now dwindled to make nearly 3%. She highlighted that Pakistan has subjected Christians, Hindus, Sikhs, Ahmadiyas, Pashtuns, Sindhis and the Baloch to draconian blasphemy laws, blatant abuse and forced conversions over the years. 
President of Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Shehbaz Sharif on Thursday hit out at Prime Minister Imran Khan's government for giving one-time conditional permission to former Premier Nawaz Sharif to travel abroad for medical treatment. Nawaz Sharif was released on bail last month from a seven-year sentence for corruption after repeated medical issues. Shehbaz Sharif, the president of Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz or PMLN party, on Thursday hit out at the government for giving one-time conditional permission to former Premier Nawaz Sharif to travel abroad for medical treatment. Shehbaz said, Prime Minister Imran Khan's government has stooped to a new low by asking Nawaz Sharif for multi-billion rupees indemnity bonds to strike his name off the no-fly list. He said the government was doing so even as the courts have already granted Nawaz bail to seek treatment anywhere in Pakistan or abroad. The government on Wednesday granted ailing Nawaz Sharif a one-time permission to travel abroad for treatment for a period of four weeks, provided he submits an indemnity bond to the tune of rupees 7 to 7.5 billion. Three-time Prime Minister Sharif was released on bail last month from a seven-year sentence for corruption after repeated medical issues. Sharif, who has dominated Pakistani politics for three decades, denies the corruption charges, claiming they are politically motivated. Pakistan's Foreign Office on Thursday said that bilateral ties with Afghanistan have normalized as high-level diplomatic engagements took place recently. This comes after a diplomatic row resurfaced between the two neighboring countries earlier this month. Pakistan's Foreign Office on Thursday said that bilateral ties have normalized as high-level diplomatic engagements took place following some restraint in relations between Pakistan and Afghanistan recently. Earlier this month, a diplomatic row had resurfaced when Afghanistan objected to summoning of its charged DFS by Pakistan's spy agency Inter-Service Intelligence over the harassment claims made by Pakistani diplomats in the country's embassy in Kabul. On November 4, Pakistan had also launched a protest in Kabul by holding operations at the embassy over the claims. A high-level delegation visited Kabul and held meetings with senior officials of the Afghan side. Recent bilateral developments were discussed. There was agreement to enhance mutual coordination and take steps to move forward. It was also agreed to hold Afghanistan-Pakistan Action Plan for Peace and Solidarity, APAPS, meeting in Kabul in December 2019. The Afghan government had also last month protested over a police raid on the Afghan market in Pakistan's Peshawar following an ownership dispute over the property. Kabul had then also closed its consulate in Peshawar. Sri Lanka will be voting on Saturday to elect a new president. Preparations were on full swing on Friday ahead of the polls that come months after Easter Sunday attacks that raised fears over the safety of the island nation. Sri Lankans will go to the polls to elect a new president on Saturday. The polls for a new leader is crucial as the island nation struggles with a sluggish economy, security challenges and increasing political polarization. Ballot boxes and security were prepared in Sri Lanka on Friday ahead of the election. For the first time in Sri Lanka's history of executive presidency, no sitting president, prime minister or leader of the opposition is contesting in the presidential election. ඊට අමතරව සිවිල් ආරක්ෂක බලකායේ නිලධාරීන් හා බටයින් 8080ක් Though this year's election has a record 35 candidates running from across the political spectrum the fight is between two main candidates the ruling United National Party Sajid Premadasa and Gotabaya Rajapaksa from the opposition Sri Lanka Peoples Front or SLPP party 52-year-old Premadasa, the only son of assassinated President Rana Singhe Premadasa, has built his campaign on promising a mixture of continuity and new leadership. 
Gotabaya, a former defense chief under whom Sri Lanka's 26-year-long war with Tamil rebels ended, has promised a return to the policies of his brother Mahinda, who many rights groups accused of widespread violations during his 10-year rule. Bangladesh has the fourth highest prevalence rate of child marriage in the world and the second highest number of absolute child brides according to UNICEF Helpline 333 for Adolescent Girls launched in 2018 by the Bangladesh government has emerged as a lifesaver. Bangladesh has one of the highest rates of child marriages in the world. Child marriage mostly leads to trafficking and the link is impossible to ignore. Traffickers prey on the vulnerable and child marriage is what makes young girls vulnerable in the first place. Young girls, especially from rural villages, are now escaping forced marriage by calling the helpline number 333. Helpline 333 for adolescent girls launched in April 2018 by the Bangladesh government has emerged as a lifesaver. Bangladesh has been trying to address such social maladies as child marriage and other social ills that have hampered the country's development in a bid to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. We're really happy that our government administrations, they are responding to the calls and they are protecting our young underage girls from child marriage. We hope in recent years, in recent future, Bangladesh will be child-marriage-free country. According to the State of World Population Report 2019 released by United Nations Population Fund, a staggering 59% of the marriages that took place in Bangladesh between 2006 and 2017 involved brides below the age of 18. At a time when residents in smog-hit New Delhi are gasping for breath, an oxygen bar in the Indian capital is offering pure oxygen to its customers in different aromas. Although popular across the globe, the concept is relatively new in India. A puff of fresh air is all what the Indian capital New Delhi is gasping for as air quality is hovering from poor to severe plus category since late October. An oxygen bar that was introduced in New Delhi in June this year is offering the city a 15-minute session for the same in exchange for nearly 7 US dollars and the crowd is loving it. The bar, especially attracting middle-aged and elderly Delhi residents, also provides various fragrances for the service. Heart motor, that's the main thing. Oxygen is very difficult to drink. लेकिन हवा तो उसके कंट्रोल में नहीं है और यहाँ पे जब आप जैसे बोलते कोशिश कर ही रहे हैं कि भाई आपको बेस्ट टू बेस्ट 99 परसेंट ऑक्सीजन प्रोवाइड करें तो वी आर फॉर्च्यूनेट फॉर दिस अभी भी मैंने चेक किया था फोन में तो लगभग 642 कुछ एयर क्वालिटी इंडेक्शन बता रहा था जो कि बहुत ही मतलब कि सेहत के कार्बन वगैरह जो भी आपके अंदर जा रहा है उसके इफेक्ट को ये कम करता है और बॉडी को एनर्जाइज करता है बॉडी को रिलैक्स फील कराता है विद सेवरल पोस्टर्स एंड अदर इंफॉर्मेटिव पैम्फलेट्स द बार आल्सो एक्सप्लेन्स द इंपैक्ट ऑफ ईच फ्लेवर ऑन द बॉडी ऑल्दो पॉपुलर अक्रॉस द ग्लोब द कांसेप्ट ऑफ एन ऑक्सीजन बार इज रिलेटिवली न्यू इन इंडिया मेनी पीपल आल्सो यूज इट फॉर रिक्रिएशन वेल दैट्स द वे इट वाज इन साउथ एशिया दिस इवनिंग before we conclude the top stories once again. Indian PM Modi says need to focus on trade and investment among BRICS nations. Relations with Afghanistan normal after recent row says Pakistan's foreign office. And Sri Lanka gears up for crucial presidential poll. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.